Welcome to Sunday Stories with Miss Jana. And I have to say a very special hello to some of my friends. I think I see Ivy, is that you? Hi, Ivy. And who else is there? <gasps> Sam, Charlie, how are you? And Elizabeth and Kenneth, yay. Oh, I see Isaac and Lucas. And is that you, Hudson? Oh, so good to see you all. And Ellie, hi. And who else is with you, Ellie? Oh, I see Lily and Hugh. And I think I see Marjorie out there. It's so good to see all your faces, even from afar. So join us tonight for some special songs and stories. My Shadow is Pink, written and illustrated by Scott Stewart. Published by Larrikin House. My dad has a shadow that's blue as can be, and there's nothing but blue in my whole family tree. But mine is quite different, it's not what you think, for mine is not blue. My shadow is pink. My shadow loves ponies and books and pink toys, princesses, fairies, and things not for boys. But there's one thing it likes most I have found. It loves wearing dresses and dancing around. It spins and it sparkles. And it twirls through the air. Then stops as my dad walks in with a stare. It will turn blue one of these days. Don't worry, he says. It's just a phase. Dad's shadow is blue. It is big. It is strong. But when I stand with it, I just feel so wrong. I wish mine was blue like all of the others. I wish mine was blue like my dad's and my brother's. I'd be part of the group of that, there's no doubt. But I cannot fit in when my shadow stands out. Now things are all changing, and that is not cool. I'm ready to start my first day of school. You'll need pencils and books and lunch you must bring. Dress up with your shadow in its favorite thing. My heart skips a beat as I put on a dress, and I look at my dad, who is anxious and stressed. He takes me to class, and I turn to say bye. His face is all worried. There's fear in his eyes. So I step in the doorway and puff out my chest. One thing is clear. I'm not like the rest. I try to say hi, but my voice is too quiet. The kids turn around, and the room, it goes silent. I run out the door, and I push past my dad. I run to my house feeling angry and sad. If my shadow was blue, I'd be there making friends. I'd be laughing and playing and drawing with pens. I rip off my dress, throw it down to the floor. I won't wear it again, not ever, no more. Just then at my door came a soft little knock. It's my dad walking in, and I look up, in shock. Both he and his shadow in dresses they stood, with shimmering seams and pink sparkling hoods. He speaks in a voice that's quite soft but is stern. Pick up that dress. You must listen and learn. Your shadow is pink, I see, now it's true. It's not just a shadow, it's your innermost you. He showed me the photos of parents and brothers, and sisters and aunts and uncles and others. We've all had a shadow that's hidden from eyes. Sometimes our shadow, it lives in disguise. His shadow loves painting and fashion and art. Her shadow loves engines and powerful cars. His shadow loves dance with its turns and its twirls. Her shadow, she hides it. Her shadow likes girls. His shadow loves theater and acting and plays. 
Her shadow loves science and planets and space. Your shadow is you, and pink it will be. So stand up with your shadow and yell, This is me! And some they will love you, and some they will not. But those that do love you, they'll love you a lot. So put on that dress and get back to school. If someone won't like you, then they are the fool. My heart nearly burst, and my shadow, it soared. I picked up the dress and wore it once more. We ran out the door, this time holding hands. My dad and our shadows together, we stand. I stride in my class and I puff out my chest. I may be different, but different is best. I join a small group, though in I don't blend. They look up and smile. Will you be our friend? The End The Very Hungry Caterpillar Felt, based on the book written and illustrated by Eric Carle. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. Does anyone remember what he started to eat with? On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. Let's count them. One, two, three. Three. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was, you guessed it, still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through, can you help me with all of these? One piece of chocolate cake one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, the little hungry caterpillar had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. That day, the little caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, his tummy felt so much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, huge caterpillar. He built a little house called a cocoon all around himself. And he stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon and pushed his way out. And guess what? He was a beautiful Butterfly. Red, a crayon story by Michael Hall. Published by Green Willow Books. He was red. But he wasn't very good at it. Oh dear. His teacher thought he needed more practice. I'll draw a red strawberry, then you draw a red strawberry. You can do this, really. But he couldn't, really. Like this? Oh my, let's try again. His mother thought he needed to mix with other colors. Why don't you two go out and draw a nice round orange? A really big one. A really orange one. But they made a big greenish one. Yuck! Oops. His grandparents thought he wasn't warm enough. Your class is making self-portraits for parents' night. Wear this warm red scarf. Nice! It's so you! But... It so wasn't. Oh, dear me. 
everyone seemed to have something to say. Sometimes I wonder if he's really red at all. Don't be silly, it says red on his label. He came that way from the factory. Frankly, I don't think he's very bright. Well, I think he's lazy. Right, he's got to press harder. Really apply himself. Give him time, he'll catch on. Of course he will. But he didn't catch on. Green frog! Black sheep! Brown cow! Red... Ugh! All the art supplies wanted to help. The masking tape thought he was broken inside. This will help hold you together. The scissors thought his label was too tight. One snip should do it. I thought he wasn't sharp enough. Stay still now. But even with all our help, and all his hard work, he just couldn't get the hang of it. One day, he met a new friend. Will you make a blue ocean for my boat? I can't. I'm red. Will you try? So, he did. Thank you, it's perfect. You're welcome. It was easy. And he didn't stop there. Blue jeans, blue bells, blue bird. Blue berries, blue whale. I'm blue. He was blue, and everyone was talking. My son is brilliant. Who could have known he was blue? I always said he was blue. It was obvious. His blue ocean really lifted me. All of his work makes me happy. His blue strawberries are my favorite. He's so intense. I'm going to make a lime green lizard with him. A really big one. I hear he's working on a huge new project. He's really reaching for the sky. And he really was. The End Glub, 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 three ducklings sitting in a bath. Three little ducklings sitting in a bath. One jumped out and said with a laugh, There's not enough room for me to splash! Ha ha ha! Two little ducklings sitting in a bath. One jumped out and said with a laugh, There's not enough room for me to splash! Quack quack! One little duckling sitting in a bath. He jumped out and said with a laugh, There's not even enough room for me to splash. Quack, quack, quack. Harriet Gets Carried Away by Jessie Seema Published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers Harriet loved costumes. She didn't save them for Halloween, or only wear them to dress up birthday parties. Harriet wore costumes all the time. On the morning of her own dress-up birthday party, Harriet was a busy bee. We still need to pick up some snacks from the grocery store, her dad said. And lots of party hats, Harriet added. Her dads shared a look. Okay, they said, but don't get carried away. Harriet was sure she could manage that. She changed into her extra special errand running costume, straightened her bow tie, waddled down the street, through the subway and into the store. Her dad seemed to have the deli counter covered. 
So Harriet set out on a quest for the perfect party hats. But instead, she found something else. Harriet forgot all about the party hats. She waddled past the checkout lines, through the city, and out of town. Where are we going? Harriet asked excitedly. Back home, of course, a penguin answered. The city is a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. As the balloons floated farther from the city, Harriet's thoughts floated back to her birthday party. Uh, Excuse me, said Harriet. I don't think I belong here. That's okay, the penguins replied. Everyone feels like they don't fit in sometimes. Maybe you should lose the bow tie. But Harriet didn't care about fitting in. She cared about getting back to the store. So she straightened her bow tie and hatched a plan. And another. Hmm. Things were not going smoothly. Harriet was almost out of ideas when one emerged from the sea. Hey, said the orca, you're not a penguin. How did you know, cried Harriet. Penguins don't wear bow ties, he replied. Harriet realized this orca might just be her ticket home. So she told him her tale of costumes and penguins and hot air balloons. She told him all about her family and her city and the party hats she needed to find. And when her story was finished, she said, I could really use a lift. It just so happens I'm heading up north for a family reunion, replied the orca. I could drop you off along the way, in exchange for a fancy red bow tie. This seemed like a fair trade. As the orca swam, Harriet daydreamed. Once Harriet could make out the city in the distance, the orca came to a halt. This is as far as I can go, he said. So Harriet called in a favor from some friends she knew from the park. We'll take it from here, they said. Harriet soared back into the store and headed straight for the party hats. It didn't take long to pick out the perfect ones. She found her dads at the deli just where she'd left them. Where did you sneak off to? they asked. I just went to get the party hats, said Harriet. Oh, and I could use a new bow tie. With hats in hand, Harriet waddled back through the subway, up the street, and into her room. She put on her birthday party costume, straightened her party hat, and headed up to the roof. The party was a great success, and no one got carried away. Except maybe Olivia. The end. Great work, everyone. I'm so proud of all your listening, and I would love to hear what your favorite stories are. You can have your grown-up tell us through Facebook or email or even give us a call. If your grown-up lets you, we have more videos on our YouTube page that you can access and enjoy. So tonight we're going to final, tonight we're going to end off with Twinkle Twinkle. Let's do it together. Ready? We need our twinkle hands. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little 
star, how I wonder what you are. Great job, my friends. I hope you have a wonderful sleep tonight and a fantastic week ahead. Sweet dreams. Mm -hmm.